Hi, thanks for joining us today. Welcome to our second next end by 3D Systems webinar during this COVID-19 lockdown. After our first webinar focused on all functions of 3D Sprint, we are now going to explore one of the most exciting applications for 3D printing in our opinion, and that is the full digital 3D printed dentures. A little different approach today, as we will combine live software demonstration for CAT and 3D Sprint, as well as virtually take you to our training center in Susterberg in the Netherlands, where we can see the printers as well as post-processing and finishing of the denture. Our training center has recently been renewed and expanded so that we can host our resellers for product and workflow trainings, but in the near future also organize open classes for end users. We can cover software, printing, post-processing, as well as all other lab work that could be involved in the application at hand. And of course, it is also fully equipped to cover our Vertex Dental materials as well. What makes today's um, webinar extra special is our guest presenter, Herman Versteeg. Herman is the founder and owner of DTL Median and Heer Hugo Waard, the Netherlands. In his dental lab and clinic, they follow a digital integrated workflow for all kinds of dentures, crowns, bridges, and implant restorations by using an intraoral scanner, as well as CBCT, lab scanners, 3D printers, and milling machines. Today, Herman will take us through the steps of designing a full denture and three shape dental designer, as well as demonstrate the copy denture function. After that, Mano Pot, our senior application specialist at NextEnt, will go over tips and tricks to orient and position these dentures in 3D Sprint. Then we take you to our training center, where Lars, our also application specialist at NextEnt, will show you all the steps involved to manufacture these dentures. Like always, I encourage you to use the Q&A function of this webinar to post any questions that come up during the presentations. And of course, we will make this webinar available on, your, on our YouTube channel and social media shortly after. So with this, I would like to hand the presentation over to Herman. Herman, take it okay. away. <clears throat> Thank you very much. I will share my screen with you. So I will go into here. Yes, great. Thank you. Thank you very much for my uh, for your introduction. And um, so all good. Um, good morning, good afternoon and good evening. Um, I will walk you through the design steps in the TreeShape software. Um, so I will give you an idea about the possibilities in the software, how to, what is the difference between uh, when you're mill or print in the software and what kind of parameters we use. And also I will show you the, the workflow for the copy denture. So when we start, I will start with make, setting up an order form. Um, so I will set up the order form. I uh, set up the 1.7, hold the shift key and go to the 2.7. Uh, press the 3.7, hold the shift key and go to the 4.7. And then I will choose my anatomy and I will choose the artificial tooth. And then you can download from the soft, uh, from the website of NextEnt 3D Systems, you can download the DME files. So you will have the perfect uh, parameters in your software for the right material. So here I will choose the NextEnt material, the Crown and Bridge MFH. It's a great feature in a 2020 software tree shape that you can highlight or make favorites in your materials. So I will set up the color and it's already set to the manufacturing process for the printer. Then I will uh, choose a Gingiva and I will go into my um, uh, my favorites and you will see here the next end denture 3D plus material. I will set a color. You see there are five colors available. I'm a real big fan of the opaque pink and then you see already the next end manufacturing process is highlighted. So I will select bridge. So all the two will be one uh, connected to each other. So it will be one big bridge and you then you will be able to uh, uh, freely uh, free morph all the teeth. So here you can set up what you will scan. So you can scan to model an impression or a digital impression. And um, so you can use for now. I will uh, normally you press the scan button and you will go directly into your scanning program. Now we will set OK and um, I will have to fill in some here and then you go. You see the order here and now you can import your scan and add your scans to your order. 
I've already uh, set up some um, a case here. So here you will see the start when you're opening the software to design. Now here you see the colors of uh, the scanning of the texture scanning. I'm not a big fan of the colors, so most time I toggle this off and I set them to chromatic colors. And for me, that works more easier. The first step in the software is that you have to uh, define the occlusal plane. And that's your uh, incisal edge of your wax frame or, or your copy denture. So here you will set three points on your molar uh, or your incisal between the two centrals and on your second molar and um, on your uh, motor on the second quadrant, and then it will make an, an occlusal plane. Um, you will see here it's highlighted on this point. You can go back in the software, so you can go a back, a step back, and then you can morph your models if you like. So if you want to remove some air bubbles and anything, you want to add some attachments, you can do it here. I will skip this one. I will go to the next step, and you will see there are some points here on the model that you can have to set up. So you have to set your tuberosities, your papilla, your canine points, and for the lower, the retro molar pads, the buccal and lingual side, and the middle of the ridge, and also the canine points. It's really important that you define its point on the right place because it gives you the model analysis for your setup. So here you'll see the two lines. Uh, there will be created a line between the retro molar pad and the canine. That's the middle of the ridge, and also the pounce angle from your canine to your lingual point to the retro molar pad. Um, so I will hit the next button and then you'll see the upper boundary. So here you can uh, draw your boundary of your denture base. Um, you also can free draw if you like. Um, you can click, click on, the button, on, the, on the point and you see it fast at a spline and then you can free, um, free draw this line. Um, one point I want to show is um, that's really important if you do any border molding is that you set up your um, your outline on the inside of the buccal side of your impression. So always set it like here, not in the middle, because if you set it in the middle, your border molding will be cut to half. So if you do an impression with border molding, always fully fill this full border, really important. Okay, I will go to the next step, and then we have to define the lower boundary. So here you'll see the lower boundary. And um, I add some attachments here uh, because it's a denture for locators. So I will chair side uh, make these locators into the mouth when uh, I do the placement of the final denture. So we'll go to the next step. And then you will see the blocking out. So this phase is your insertion direction. And that's a nice part when you print. This doesn't make sense to change this because printing um, your orientation will be set in your uh, three day sprint program. And uh, the point is, um, this part is only important when you mill because this blue line is your burr. So if you mill, it's really important that you, um, yeah, that you move your um, insertion pad of your drill so it can be better reach your undercuts. But the best part for printing is this, it doesn't make sense to do anything with it because you can print whatever form that you like. So undercuts, it's um, no issue at all with printing. So we go to the next step. You can choose for blocking out. So if you like to block out some parts on your models, you can do it here. So with your add button, you can add material. And then we'll do next. And also the next one. So no changing here of your insurgent direction. And you can add some wax if you like. So if you have a bar or something on top, you can move some, add some material. So now we go into the setup phase. Um, you see already how fast that goes. So it's a few clicks to go to the setup phase. And we use here the Vertex Dental um, library. Um, it's free of charge for downloading in TreeShape. You can go into your control panel and then you can download it from the library part. Um, and you see they have a full arch and a normal library. So when you choose the full arch, you will see everything. So the anteriors and the posteriors will be related to each other. So you get a perfect setup already into your um, into your smell composer. When you choose the uh, normal libraries, you have to combine these two, uh, the lower and the upper, with each other. So um, that gives you more freedom. On the other side, it, it, yeah, it saves some time to use the full art libraries. Um, so here you see, um, I can just toggle on here the wax rim. For me, it's really important, and I think that's always um, 
nice to start with when you go for a setup. I uh, use a kind of a protocol, so I always work from uh, the big movements to the small movements. So what I do here, I always start with uh, setting up the perfect, um, uh, the complete setup with my wax rim. So there are the big movements. And after that, I go to a little bit smaller. So I go more, most of the time to my lower motors and you see it here. So I will choose this third button and then you can just place it on the right place. And then when you set up that, you will see if you look at this, the upper will also go with the lower. So it will always, always stay in the perfect uh, occlusion. And then you can go into the more um, uh, placement of the separate teeth. So here we can move them symmetrically, or if you can say, okay, I want to only move this teeth, or you can do it like this. Um, I can also show you some uh, tools for uh, making a second class or a third class bite. I get a lot of questions about that one, how you do it. I will show you, so um, I will go to the top, so I will take away my lower model. And what I do, I just grab, when I use the third button, I just grab the full lower teeth block, and then I move it in front of this teeth, I lower it a little bit, and you see it's already in the perfect position. So the only thing that we have is some big, um, some big DST mess here. So, but we have to close them. And that's really easy when you use a full arch and you can freely morph the teeth. So what I do now, I make them a little bit bigger. And uh, most of the time I use a symmetric mode because then all the teeth will be the same size. Um, so I will place them here, make them a little bit more bigger. And then this one, move them a little bit here. And also this one, we'll make a little bit bigger. And also here, and just a little bit to inside. So here you will see with some simple movements, you can easily make a second or third class bite. So all the things are in the free morphing tools. So just place your complete block of your upper or lower teeth on the perfect uh, spot, and then make them bigger or smaller to close the DST mass or the, the area you have to cover. You can also open the articulator in this uh, part, and you can um, also, yeah, make some changes in the uh, opening of your uh, of your uh, articulator. You also can do the movements, so you can check um, how the movements will be in this articulator pattern. So here you will see there are some interferences on the lower teeth. You will see them in blue, so you can adjust them and do the movements again, and you can change that part. So here you will see these movements and you can also show them in color if you like. So here you will see the movements in color like it's normally is when you work in a conventional way. So I could take this off again. So then we go to the, um, to the next step and that's creating the maxillary base. Um, so that's creating the whole denture. Uh, no, I don't want to apply it now, okay. So here I will show you a really cool new tool in TreeShape 2020 version, and that's the Gingivator. What it does, it automatically creates an almost perfect Gingiva for your denture. So there's a lot of um, work already been done for you with the software. So we have some options. So you see the delicate one, you see the natural and the more intense one, and uh, I will choose you out the intense ones, and you see this, all these sliders will go in another position. I will hit the preview button and then you will see what's happening and that you have a almost perfect um, Gingiva creation. So you can choose whatever you like and if you choose uh, um, already set up, um, uh, set up uh, protocol, you can also move them if you like to, to change these, uh, these parameters. So here, if you hoover on top of it, I will show you, you can see what kind of changes will be added to your design. So here you will see it. Um, I will take this off and here you will see. So if you hoover on top of it, you will see what happened when you change these different parameters. Um, so here you see it's, yeah, it's a heavy uh, kind of modulation, but there are a lot of people like this, um, but you can also choose for a more delicate one or a more natural one. So that's a really cool tool. Um, I will go to the next step because uh, we already um, set up here a tool. 
um, go to this one, yes. And when you choose, so normally you go first to the lower one, create a Jinji file, but now I already skipped this step because of the time. And you see now you come in the connector phase. And this is a really important part because this is the time that you make the connector for your whole team. So here you will see different scaling options um, that I will show you here. So here you see the different scaling options. So we have a facial, a facial scale, that's the number two. So this is, will change as 100% the big line. And so you can move it to 80%, so this will be smaller. And one is this, so this is the lingual scaling. So this will also change, and the three is a center scaling. So what I did, I um, did some um, extremes. So I always like to put them on the lowest range. There is a limit on it. So you will see this is the limit, 70, 70, 60%, but it's um, enough for a strength arch and, um, and that's the most nice aesthetic um, solution. I will show you what happens when you, this is the, so this is the low setting, but also you can set it to 100% and you will see what will change. You see there will be enormous connectors and uh, it will be no aesthetic at all, but yeah. It's, a, it's an option, you can do it, but this is showing what will change when you move it to a really high or low setting. So for me, the most, uh, the lowest setting works the most aesthetic for me. So I will go to the next phase and then we'll go into the sculpt anatomy phase. And the sculpt anatomy phase, uh, this is the part where you can modify the teeth. So really important that if you use a uh, your sculpt toolkit here, it's only on your teeth like this. You can add here material if you like. But this is also the place where you can use your articulator to grind the teeth in. So I will open it here and I will do the movements. I will show you here. To wait a little bit, take some time. I already did some movements, I think. Yes, okay. because now you can um, grind in all the different movements and interferences. So that works uh, really easy. We have to wait a little bit. Calculation time. Yes. Okay, you'll see it here. Um, so I can now do some movements. So if I move to the different movements, you see here there will be some blue edits and if you hit the adapt design button, so I can do it like this, it will now grind in all these interferences on your teeth. So here you have the cut contact, so now zero, uh, 0 0.1, but you can make it more or less if you like. So here, this is the moment you can grind in your teeth. So I will go now to the next step, this is sculpt the denture base. So here's the option that you can sculpt your denture base if you like. So if you say, okay, I want to add some material, you can do it here. So you can add some material or you can smooth some material if you like. So if you want to make it more delicate, you can do it like this. Um, I will also show you an option for the papilla. You see there, the papillas are almost in the right position here. Um, in the old version, you always have to do it by hand. I will show you some trick that it makes it more easier for you. So um, I will show you here how it works. Um, I will clear this one. So if you hold your Alt, alt button, um, you can put some dots on your Geneva like this. And if you hold your Shift button and you hover on top of this uh, one of these balls, you can move the Gengifa in once. So that makes also, uh, that saves a lot of time if you do it in once and you get also the papillas on the right height everywhere on your denture. So that's a really easy tool to use. Um, okay, perfect. I will also show you an option for uh, making a ruge. A lot of people asking me, okay, how is you can copy a ruge from, from, the, uh, from the patient's um, real palate? So that's a really easy tool. What I do, I slide this uh, denture base to some transparency, and now you can see the rugae. This, this is not a perfect model, but you can see. So now you can uh, make this a little bit smaller and you can go on top of this rugae and just copy it. Just go on top of it and just copy it. And now you will see it makes a copy of your rugae. 
Um, so this is a perfect solution. If you want the rule gain into your denture, you can do it on this way and it makes it almost the same as the natural rugae on the palate of the patient. So I will take the next step and that's the cobalt mechanism step. And this is the part where the teeth, the arch will be cut to the perfect length for your denture. And here you'll see all kinds of different uh, options here. Um, some parameters, I will show them here um, for the coupling mechanism. You will see them here. So here you see a drawing on how this different uh, parameters are be adjusted. So the coupling depth, that's important one because that's your depth from your uh, gingiva to the top of the gingiva. So how far will the density will be, uh, be in, into the gingiva? and another kind of parameters. The most time I just hold this on the standard values. I don't change this. Um, also part is that you can move. Um, so if you make this a little bit more trans transparent, you see this blue, a kind of blue purple uh, surroundings around the teeth. And you will also see what I will do. I will change this a little bit. So this is will change my insertion direction of the uh, cobalt mechanism step. So this will uh, make some changes on that part. For a normal denture with a lot of space, it doesn't make sense to change this. But if you have a media denture and the teeth are really short, it's important that you move this on a way that the teeth are not cut too far here on the labial side um, of the teeth. So you can move this here and you will see that it will change and it makes another insertion direction of your arch. So I will hit the next button and we go to the pre-manufacturing stage. And I will show you some parameters here that will um, help you to understand that. Um, here you see the minimal thickness under the teeth, and that will be the, the thickness that will be uh, between your arch and uh, um, the jaw. So your thickness of your gingiva underneath the teeth. And also the glue space. And uh, the glue space for us, we hold also a standard value. So we hold there a 0 0.2 value. And for uh, printing of dentures and also the meaning, it's, a, it's, it's the best value. Um, my, I heard so also questions about how can I manage my VOD when I have a glue space. And But I will show you how less this glue space is. It's, it's, it's almost nothing. And um, you can set it lower if you like, but the problem is if you set it lower, it will be more difficult um, for you to bring in the arch because it's too tight. So there is a problem and you cannot fit the arch on the proper way into your denture. So for us, the 0 0.2 is the best clue space. I will hit, uh, I already hit the preview button. So what I do now, it calculates the, uh, the gingiva part to the arch of the denture and it created the pockets for the for the teeth so the complete pocket where we can put in the arch so we have to wait a little bit and then you will see what will happen to this and um yeah what what is 0 0.2 because yeah i think that's um that's almost nothing i will have to wait to for some calculation time here and you see it's almost done yeah and here you see it's already created. So I will turn this off. So here you see the pockets for the complete arch. And here you see the arch for the denture. So now I'll make a cross section so I can show you how much the 0.2 is. So, I, so if you look at this, you almost don't see it. So I really have to zoom in to see that 0.2. And here you will see it, the 0.2 blue space. It's almost nothing and you need that because there is also um, you need some space for your for your printing material. Lars will show you um, in the session after Menno how you glue it in and you also see that you need some space for your glue material. Um, there is also another option if you really want to be sure about this and you say, OK, I want a positioning guide or a bite splint. There is an option in tree shape. You have to enable it in your control panel on the part of Gingiva and then you can select positioning guide or occlusal bite aligner. So you have to select one of these boxes and that will make an extra step in your design phase at the end of the design and it will create occlusal bite aligner so that can help you to um, to be sure that the arches are properly placed we don't use it at all because 
the you will see when you print it, it's a perfect fit and it doesn't make sense to use a positioning guide like that. Um, OK, this is the part for the denture. Um, I will go. Um, so normally when you uh, set up this one, um, you create. So when you end the order, it will create a few um, files. I will show you here. So here you see uh, the different files. So it makes six files. So you see also the monoblock. Um, I will show it to you. So the software automatically create a monoblock for a try-in. So you can print that in try-in material. That's really easy. Um, so you set up your order like it's already been done for your final denture. And the software automatically makes an order. So makes a monoblock. I will open this one. I will show you what kind of files. So here you will see the upper base and you also see the deep arch that will be created. So here's the lower TVARCH. So all the four files are ready to print. You can directly put them into to, um, create a sprint and Mena will show after me how that works. Um, I will go back to the software and I will show you the copy denture. Um, so a copy denture is a really new cool tool in TreeShape that's um, a new opportunity because um, if you work in a conventional way, it was not possible to make an exact copy of uh, full denture and now it's possible. So it's a kind of new business model because you can make a spare denture for a patient. So if this patient traveling a lot, there's a lot of holiday and how great will it be that you have a spare denture into your, uh, in your pocket? So the same as a spare glass or a spare hearing aid, you can now make a spare denture. So I will show you how it works. So, um, so we set up a new order form. Uh, we do the same. So select the 17227 and 372 four seven and then we select anatomy again and then we select artificial tooth we select the print material and the color so here and then we hit the gingiva button and we not go to the first one we go to the fourth one and that's the copy denture tool so we go to that one and then we select uh, the material we go down and we see the next and denture 3a plus so we hit this one we use the color and then we're ready and you can set bridge. So this is it. And normally you can go directly into scan. There is a whole scanning protocol in TreeShape that leads you through the scanning process to make a copy denture. And then you go into the design. So I already opened some design. Um, so normally when you hit the design button, you will start here, occlusal alignment. You uh, make the occlusal alignment uh, to the uh, occlusal plane. And after that, you can sculpt it. So if you want to, add some material or remove or something on your scan, you can do it here. And then we go next and you see the teeth and the identification. So here we have to set the annotations for the denture. So it's really important when you set the annotations, always set it on the occlusal side of the teeth. It's really important because it makes the software more easier to calculate the right spline around the teeth. So here you see it's all on the occlusal and incisal, incisal side of the teeth. And if you have only a denture with like uh, two, two molars and one premolar or two premolar one molar, you have always have to choose the one seven. So you don't have a one seven, just place this one seven onto your gingiva, just on the denture. Doesn't make um, doesn't doesn't make any problems. So the segmentation, um, it needs some calculation now because uh, what the server will do, it automatically calculates a spline around every teeth, and normally it does it so that it's um, this, this is done around every teeth separately. Um, so we'll take some time to wait for that. And um, you can also see the options that uh, you can make a full arch. So normally it will be uh, around the separate teeth. And then you can hit this option, the group in one block, and it makes one big arch of it. So and then you can hit this button the draw manually. And if you like to draw another line, you can just draw around here and you can do some changes like this. Always be aware that um, if you use this, uh, this feature, use a heavy computer because there's a lot of calculation involved here and you will see if the computer is not really good, you will you have some issues with it. So really important to use a heavy computer and have a graphic card on this part. So normally you set this part, set a lower one and I will show you what happened after that. 
and I already prepared that, you will see that there are coming out two parts. So you have the Gingiva and you have the Danger part. And you see it's looking like nothing, but it will happen later. So here you again, you can sculpt the anatomy face, so you can uh, morph your teeth if you like. And if you hit the next button, it will sculpt your denture base. So you can sculpt it and make it more uh, nicer, uh, etc. You can modify whatever you like. So you can uh, make the papils a little bit on a different way like this. And we hit the next button and you will show you go directly to the same step as your normal denture, the coupling mechanism, and that will um, create a perfect arch on the basal side of the arch. And so that's more easier to cut out in the gingiva part. And we have to wait a little bit for some calculation time. And you will see at the end, the software will generate two separate STL files. Here the glue space again, 0 0.2, hit the next button and it will um, go into calculation of the gingiva part. And if you look at it, it will generate two STL files. So a separate base like STL and a separate um, teeth for STL. So I will go here and look how it looks now. I have to set the preview button. Now it's already gone. So normally it's um, just creating an arch and a base and you can print it directly in 3D Sprint. Um, so I think for this, um, we have uh, enough options show. I will um, give you some more information about the try in because um, I show you the option for a monoblock. So you can print this monoblock and use that to try it in with a patient. So um, I'm a big fan of it. I always use a try in. I never do it without. So you can print this try in, try it in a patient. Patient can take it home and see the aesthetics. OK, it's printed in one color, but the patient can get a really good image about how the new denture will look like. Um, and it's also really valuable information for you as a clinician because you can uh, judge all the different uh, options you do normally. So you can judge your occlusion, the aesthetics, etc. Um, but if you do some want to do some adjustments, um, it's really easy. You go back in the software and you can go into your smile composer and do the adjustments. So if you want to lower the bait, the bite, open the articulator, press minus two, and it automatically open. And um, if you close the bite uh, the same, you can tilt your teeth or whatever you like. You can also do a chair side. So if you want to do the adjustment together with your patient, you can show the patient the adjustment. And also when you have a wrong bite registration, everybody will, will happen sometime. Um, you can take a new bite registration with this try indenture and you can use the copy and reuse cat design on your order. So if you have an existing order, normally you can go to copy and uh, reuse CAD design and it will automatically open um, a new scanning program. And you can just put in your try in into the scanner with a new bite registration and you can align it with your previous design. And you can again open your new design after scanning and it will place the denture in the perfect new occlusion. So you don't have to do any manual adjustments on your occlusion, the software will do it for you. And that's a really easy workflow. So that makes, that saves a lot of time on your on your technician end. Um, so for me, I think um, I give enough information. Um, I will give it to, uh, to Menno. Well, thank you very much, uh, Herman. That was really uh, informative. Uh, amazing to see all these new features also coming into the design software. Um, a few questions actually came in during your presentation that yes. I uh, want to quickly uh, go over uh, with you. Um, yeah, perfect. Let me see to bring you back to life. There you are. The first question rather at the beginning of your presentation mm -hmm. um, was from Andrew. Do you add any additional relief over the locator attachments for share site pickup? And if you do, how, uh, how much is your preferred amount? No, what I use, I used uh, for the attachments, I use a cylinder like the Vive 5.0 uh, cylinder, and um, that gives you enough space for the locator. But if you like, you can draw some reliefs on, on it. But for me, the, the, the cylinder is enough space for uh, the locator. Thank you very much. Um, another question that came up a little bit later What is coupling angle? The coupling angle. 
I will show you here on this side. Okay, after looking it. <laughs> No problem. Don't angle to show you number screen. two. Here you will see what the coupling angle is. It's it's the angle between the teeth and the gingiva here on this part. We're not seeing your screen. So. Oh, ah, <laughs> I will share my screen. Wait one moment. I already uh, took it over. Yeah, you see it now? Just a second. Give it a second and it should pop up now. OK, go ahead. You see it? OK, perfect. Here you will see. So this is the uh, coupling angle. This is the angle between the, the, the buccal side of the teeth and the angle with the gingiva. All right. Thank you very much. And uh, let me see. There was a few more questions. Um, when you were um, marking the, the gingiva and the papillas, let's say, to pull them up and down, yeah. um, you, you showed us one side about four, four, tooth, four teeth. Um, yeah. Can you, but you can also mark all the gingiva at once, I assume. You if you like, you can no. just press the all button and uh, press it on all the papillas on, on the denture. Very good. Um, another question came in from Fernando. Would you use the positioning liner for partial dentures? Um, the problem is this one is not available already in the partial denture workflow. So, um, but I, I understand this question and I think it will be a good solution in the partial workflow. Uh, what I heard from TreeShape is that they're working on a bridge uh, teeth solution in the partial workflow so that you get rid of your uh, separate teeth and you can make it one bridge and that will make it more uh, predictable and easier to glue in your, uh, your teeth into your partial. Very nice, very nice. Last question that just came in. Um, if we do some changes manually in Tryon, how can we bring the same changes in the final denture? Yeah, you can just, um, if you do a uh, scanning again, so you copy and reuse CAD design, you can also say, okay, I will uh, scan my um, gingiva side of the denture. So you put that on and it automatically also, you can have the option to turn it around your try-in and it also scans your um, gingiva side of your denture and you will see it in your design step where you have to do the adjustments. Very nice. Well, I think those are all the questions for now. A few more Great. came in. When doing the copy denture, do you need a specific tooth library that matches the existing denture? No. A copy denture is a copy denture. Yes, um, and <laughs> and uh, it will copy the exact uh, scan, of course. No yeah. library needed there. So, um, yeah. With this, I want to thank you for this uh, perfect presentation. Uh, stay with us. So yes, at the end absolutely. of the presentation, um, yeah. we will probably come back to you. And um, this way I can give the word to Menno. OK. Thank you very much. Thank you, German, for taking the time to uh, give us this uh, demonstration. You can see that there's a lot of possibilities uh, with uh, with ReShape and especially with uh, the software that we have here, the 3D Sprint. Um, I would like to start with the arches for uh, starting in 3D Sprint. You always have to select your printer first. It's in the upper left corner. Now I have selected a virtual one because uh, I am not at the office at the moment. Then you go to the materials. We will print the arches in the Crown and Bridge MFH materials. I will select the color. In this case, I will select color N1. We have the print mode, which is only one. We have a build style. I have a second one, but it's for R&D only. So the standard one, and then we click set. If you've done that, you can see here in the right lower corner all the selections that you have made. Now, the files that um, Gemma designed, of course, it's kind of the, the cooking show, and we have them set here. So I have the lower arch, I have the upper arch, and I will open them and they will come into 3D Sprint. Then I will select Auto Place. We will have to select the part. You can click Set, and now you can already see that these are within the platform and they are also orientated in the right direction because we want to print these arches with the supports on this side of the arch. And then the only thing left for printing the arches in this stage is select the smart support option. You will get the option. Do you want the support to be to generate one or two parts that does not have an effect on the overall part quality, but it will make it into one part. I always select no because I like to be able to move my parts individually if needed. 
and then here you already have it. This is the only thing that we have to do for printing these arches. So take two STL files, put them into the next and 50 on our 3D sprint software, click support, and that's all we have to do for printing. Now, for the next uh, demonstration, I will select another software, which is, let me see. Oh, yeah. That is the 3D Sprint RC. Uh, it's the, um, um, the newer software. It will hopefully be released end of April, but to be honest, also Corona has an effect on our schedules. But for now, it's still planned to be released in the uh, end of the month, by the end of the month. Again, we select the printer, which will be, of course, the next 5100. Now we learned that it was designed in opaque pink, so I go to my next end denture material, select the opaque pink. When you select something in next end, it will become blue. So here we have opaque pink. Click next, print mode, the build style, and we click set again. Now, then we take the two, uh, let me see, the, uh, the basis, the lower one, and the upper one. Also, we open this in 3D Sprint. And now we have to orientate these parts. Unfortunately, this is not as easy as just clicking all the place. Not yet, we are working on this. But for here, we have to use the transform options. So I will select those parts. First, I will select only one and drag it here. Then the other one, you can drag it. Dragging is done by clicking the left mouse button and then you can move your part everywhere you want. I will start with orientating of the uh, of the upper one. If you want to find out all about how to use all of these buttons, that was done in a previous um, in a previous uh, webinar that is still available on YouTube and on the website. So if you want to learn more about all the options, I would like to suggest you take a look there. Now, with the application team, which are uh, a lot of us are dental technicians, dental clinicians, we have taken a close look at the best orientation for these parts. So we feel that the best orientation is actually tilting them in a orientation. And I will show you with the amount of degrees, 60%. Um, so if we go here, you can see it started at zero and now we count down to 300. I'll show you where I am looking at. I'm looking at here and now you can see that the orientation of this specific uh, denture base is 60% and we found that this will be the best orientation for having a very nice fit but also having an excellent fit of your tooth arch. Now the same must be done for the lower of course. Select it. I want to rotate it a little bit first. Rotate it slightly, bring it into the platform. And now also here we have to first, I would like to bring it as low as possible. And also here you can use the transform option to slightly tilt this model. Now this is slightly more challenging because this model is uh, bigger than the platform, it's wider. So that's why we have to do a little bit more rotating to get the perfect uh, alignment. And I, uh, when I'm doing this, I see that I have put it upside down. Don't worry, we can easily change that. Okay, get it down to the platform. Let's see in here. And we have to rotate a little bit more because it's not inside of the platform yet like this so it's in the platform and one of the new feature features in this software where this is why i'm showing you is that we have the option to create bars now we have uh, tested it quite a lot if you print it like this you will have a, a good fit but if you want to uh, yeah squeeze out the, the last percentages you want to make it as perfect as possible we advise you to create bars. And now we have an option here, which is not available on the 3D Sprint software yet. Like I told you before, it will be available in April, end of April, and you can just put some bars on these parts. 
so on the two velocities, and this will give a slightly better fit of the printed denture. We also place a bar here, two, just two points, and then you click the apply button. We also found that if you put a bar here close to the lower part of the denture and one here, uh, let me see why is this not probably the downside of having a if you want to undo something you can just do this so I will undo it quickly because something is not working as planned let me see here here now we can see apply like I told you the software is not yet released so probably this is why we have some slight problems here now it's working and we see that we need one more. I will have to use the shift button because there is also one that we want to place here. Apply. We will do the same for the lower one here, one there. Apply. We will create one here, here. Apply. And uh, we will create one here that connects the two. This is how we advise you to print denture bases currently like i mentioned with the application team between us there's more than 50 years of experience in uh, as dental technicians and clinicians and we've done a lot of testing not only with heat mapping but also on real life cases and we've seen that printing it like this will give you the overall best part quality now of course we have to create the supports again i like to select no here and create supports The only thing that we now have to do is give you a little bit more support because because of the changes we made in the orientation, the support style is not available in the software yet. Of course, when we release the software, this will be no problem. You can just click the uh, smart support option and then that's it. For now, I would like to advise uh, you to add some supports, especially here in this area that will make the build more rigid. And we will do the same for the lower. It's already close to perfect. I would like to have some more supports here. If you change something in the supports, if you take away supports, which is always tricky, but if you add supports, you can just after that update the supports and it will update it automatically. Now you can see that there is some supports, but the supports that are inside of the denture, look at these tips, they are very small. That will almost leave no support scarring on the denture whatsoever. Here, where it's also critical that we have a perfect fit of the arch, of course, we want to like to leave occlusion, articulation, and everything that is, was designed by German intact. So we have no supports here. We have the supports bars, and now we can just send it to the actual printer. And um, yeah, that will be shown uh, by Lars. So if there are no further questions about this small topic uh, within the webinar, I would like to uh, uh, give it to Lars to show you the actual printing and the gluing of the teeth uh, arch onto the denture base. Thank you very much, Menno. Um, currently, there are no uh, questions that came in uh, about 3D Sprint. A few more questions for Herman that we will uh, handle after after Lars' uh, his, uh, demonstration. So uh, please stay tuned for that. With this, I will uh, like to invite you to our training center in Susterberg, Netherlands, close to Utrecht, where the headquarters of Nextend is. And there we see Lars. Lars, if you unmute, then we can hear you and you can take it away. Yes, you can hear me, Stein? Yes, perfect, okay. thank you. So welcome, thank you to our, our training center. I will quickly take you to uh, the printers themselves. So here you can see uh, we have set up our training center um, with uh, a couple of 5100s. Uh, everything that was created by German has been printed here. Uh, the first one you see the try and the second one it's maybe difficult to see but you see the, the the tooth the teeth arches and in the third printer I have printed the bases 
also here uh, we have our cleaning cleaning area. Um, once it's printed, we clean the, the parts there. And once the parts are clean, cleaned, uh, we can do the actual hands on on the bench. So I will quickly take you back to my bench. Uh, there we go. So. Voila. So here you can see I have the, the tooth arches and I have the denture bases. So first thing what we need to do is we need to start removing the supports, especially from uh, the tooth arches. So I will quickly break this off. And then I will take a hard carbide burr to remove all the supports that, that were on there. So I'm making sure that I remove all the supports that would interfere with the, the, the fitting of the teeth arch in the denture base. So I would voila, do that. So once they're all removed, uh, you can see that if I take the denture base and I place the tooth arch in there, they fall into place. So the next step is what we need to be uh, to do is uh, cement the tooth arches to the uh, to the base. So for that we actually use our um, our denture 3D plus material itself. I put a little bit into a cup here. So these parts are not post cured yet. We are post curing the parts after um, we have put the material in the tooth pockets. Uh, and removed all the excess material uh, from the outside of the denture base. Uh, we do this because while printing, uh, there's still uh, not a full 100% cure in the material. We are using this uh, leftover ma or material that is not 100% cured in our advantage here by uh, using it to chemically bond with the, the liquid I'm putting in there at the moment. So I have filled up all the tooth pockets. As you can see, quickly wiping away. So the next step is I will place the tooth, tooth arch in the denture base. And the next step is I want to remove all the excess material surrounding the cervical area of the tooth to make a nice uh, yeah nice part after post curing if you have put too little material in it you can add material uh, by just placing it around and it would just flow in. Um, it's you don't want air pockets in the material itself, so a little bit extra and then take out the excess uh, from the incisal edges. So this is now ready to post cure, so I will put this away. And I have one here post cured and well, so this is how it looks after post curing. So you can see that uh, the support bars that were placed are still on there, um, but the, the tooth arches is are now stuck in the denture base itself. So before we go to polish the denture base, what we need to do is take away all the bars that it, uh, we used during the printing. So I'll we'll quickly take another tool and I will remove the bars. Sorry. So after all these bars are removed, um, we can still see there's a little uh, bit of material left. So again, I'm going back to the, the carbide tool I had before. And I will remove most of the material and make it as 
smooth as I can get it. Um, usually the carbide tools leave a little bit too much uh, of roughness after uh, after taking it away. So I would suggest using a type of uh, rubber instrument to smooth it out even more. Uh, you can use uh, any rubber you already have within your practice. So once this is done and once all the, the burr uh, marks are removed, you can go to polish. So to polish the denture, again, I have here one polished. To polish the denture, you can use your regular um, acrylic polishing method. So your pumice and your high shine. And that's it, actually. It is as uh, easy as that. It's as easy <laughs> as that. Thank you very much, Lars. Um, it was a very uh, clear, uh, instructive uh, demonstration. Uh, let's see if we can uh, handle some questions and um, who should actually handle them. Um, a good question that came in during um, your demonstration, Lars, is can milled teeth be used with a printed base uh, and how can, uh, can they be bonded? And um, yeah, Lars, you, you can answer this, of course, Herman and, and Menno. If you unmute yourself, you can always shine in. So. Go ahead. Can milled teeth be used with a printed base and how can they be bonded? Um, yes, in theory, milled teeth could be used with a printed base and you could bond them using your regular cold cure acrylics. I think that Herman has a lot of experience with that. Yeah, Herman? Mm -hmm. yeah we use uh, the normal printing material. Sorry, I'm just gonna. I'm sending your image live as well. So you said you are using the normal printing material yeah, for bonding. Yeah. yeah and yeah. do you um, prepare the the parts in, yeah, in any send, way? Yeah, we send blast the the teeth arch. Only the teeth arch, the yeah. milled teeth arch. Yeah. 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 I also have this question from Andrew. Is there any advantage of roughening or sandblasting the surface of the tooth or denture base prior to bonding? Um, if I hear you, you say yes, if you have a milled um, tooth arch, um, but if everything is, is printed, there is no advantage, I, we believe at least in, in uh, roughening or uh, sandblasting um, the, the, the tooth or the, the printed base, as we will have a, a chemical bonding um, because of the curing. Yeah, yeah, that's actually correct, uh, Stein. I like to uh, weigh in a little bit here. Uh, we have tested this, of course. We have uh, uh, our own test facility at Vertex Dental Next Dent. So we have tested the uh, milled teeth. We have tested the uh, uh, stock teeth. And Herman was right. If you uh, use the milled teeth or the stock teeth, we do advise you to uh, give it a little bit of uh, roughening, sandblasting, or either with a drill or a burr, and then the uh, bonding will be perfect, both with acrylic, cold cure acrylic, like Lloyd mentioned, and apparently it also works fine with the uh, ne uh, next end 3 plus resin. Yes, another question also just came in uh, related to this. Hello, is it useful to create retentions in the teeth? Um, well, I think this is answered as well. In my yeah. opinion, mechanical retention could never harm, but Correct. it's not really necessary printed to print it and with the printed to milled i would still be a little be uh, be cautious um because the evidence probably is not so much there yet um but herman has done a lot of dentures of course so we trust your uh, judgment yeah but retention is never a bad thing no. yeah there you go um, Herman, I'm going to put you on the screen again. Uh, a few yeah. more questions came in about uh, tree shape, um, design settings and workflows. Um, can you loot the teeth individually without the connector? Um, so that I, I assume at least that the, the question is that if you can just, um, yeah, m make a printed base and maybe print the teeth without uh, connecting them as a bridge. Um, it's possible, but not with every uh, denture library. So there's a restriction on different libraries that you can 
print like separate teeth and um, uh, make an output for that. So there is a restriction on, on few libraries, you can do it. But um, yeah, if you like, there is a possibility. You can also use your uh, option to, um, what I did in the setup was now making a full arch block, but there's also possibility to split this arch. So if you like to do like two blocks, three blocks, four blocks, it's possible. Okay, so actually a lot of different possibilities there. Yes. A few more questions about the copy denture, which uh, apparently as expected is a very uh, popular uh, function. Yeah. Um, the question at hand is, can you add new teeth for the copy denture? So copy denture, but includes uh, library teeth. Is no, that possible? No. Yeah, yeah, of course <laughs> it's possible. It's really simple because you set up a new order, scan your copy denture, uh, like a new order and just make a new setup. But um, that's the most easy part. But if you, uh, what a name say, it's a copy denter. So um, if you use the copy denture workflow, it will exactly copy the denture like it will be uh, like the old denture. You can do some modifications on the teeth, but um, yeah, if there is a grinding or some wearage of the molars, you will also see it back in your copy denture. Awesome. But yeah, like you said, if, if you scan your denture as a copy denture, but then just follow the normal workflow, you will have uh, like a ghost, actually the old denture uh, over your new design and you can mimic as much as possible, but yes. still use uh, library teeth. Very yep. interesting. Uh, a lot of questions came in. I answered already a few uh, smaller questions, but about um, try-in, the, the step of the try-in mm -hmm. and then um, making changes to the try-in mm -hmm. or, or small changes and then rescanning it. So. Uh, the first question was so you can rescan your fitting surface and he, he explained a little bit more, not even so much changes, but if you take your secondary wash impression, are you to be able to realign your new fitting surface with your earlier made setup? Yeah, that's a that's a real popular question. <laughs> and um, it's it, it for now it's not possible to change like uh, changing the models of your uh, of your setup. What it only does, it make a, a copy of your um, of your try-in, and um, so you can like modify your occlusion. Um, but it's not possible to make a complete new model, uh, like a new was impression, into your try-in. Um, so we also talk about with Reshape, and they know it's 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 a kind of a wish list thing. Um, so uh, they know about the wishes that we have. So it's on their list, but for now it's not possible to, to create a whole new model out of it. All right, thank you very much. Um, last question actually, and unless something comes up, um, how to repair if a tooth shipped? And that's, yeah. I guess, depending <laughs> on what material your tooth will be made of, yeah. but let's firstly assume it is a printed, uh, printed tooth, it ships. Did it ever happen to you, Herman? Um, it doesn't have, it, for now, it's not happened, but um, if it's happened, um, we already had a thought about it. It's a perfect solution just to just uh, use a composite to fix it. Just use composite. We'll uh, yeah. ask the same question to Menno. So Menno, um, from a material and application point of view, uh, what is our experience with that? Yeah, I would uh, actually the same answer as German. You can use uh, composite. Uh, if there's a small chip, you can use uh, the, the available light curing composites to, uh, to uh, fix that problem. Very good, awesome. Um, German, what happens if the tooth was milled? Um, if the tooth was milled, you can also do the same solution. If the tooth was milled, you can use the same solution. So yeah. also use the standard acrylics. Um, yeah. There are no problems. Yeah. Do you need bonding yeah. for that? Uh, no, that, there is also another possibility. So if you have this, you have like the same data you had um, with your arch. So you already stored that data. So you can go into 3D Sprint and use, um, it's a more efficient tool, the split section of your arch. You split the teeth that is broken and you just print it again. Yes. That was uh, my, my last option that I want to suggest. Yeah. Just print a new one. Yes. <laughs> That's <laughs> what we always, always possible. say. Always possible. Always. Um, and uh, at least very fast with our printer. Um, there is uh, some questions about the webinar. Of course, um, for people that joined in later, we will share this uh, the video of this webinar on our social media and it will be uploaded to the YouTube channel of Nextend. Um, a good question here. How much will cost to make one full arch? Now, that will be dependent on, on your 
market probably also uh, and what materials that that uh, that you use um, but yeah any any ideas uh, about costs for a uh, let's say only material cost because we have to factor in a labor, we have to factor in electricity, um, people uh, on your employee list, et cetera, et cetera. But only material, I, I would say I estimate about 10 euros. Pure material cost. Herman is nodding. Yes, around that, maybe a little <laughs> bit more. Yeah, but uh, if you should like, like um, if you for a full upper, like uh, one, uh, so line one part of the denture, you have to, to print a try in and you have to print maybe a tray and you have to print like uh, the denture base and the teeth arch. It will be around between between 10, 10 and 20 euros for all yes. the materials together. But if it's only for the final denture, it, it's around 10 euros, maybe less. Very yeah, good. I always use the 10 euro, $10 mark yeah. for uh, when I do a presentation or a training. Yeah. Yes. Very good. Thank you, Menno. Um, another question came in. Print denture compared to conventional denture, which is better in terms of strength, is always very difficult to compare because also conventional denture, many different material availabilities, uh, manual labor, things could go wrong there. Um, yeah. Herman, but, it, but um, not only on strength, Menno, if you don't mind, I will come to you in a second. But Herman, you have done so many dentures, both mm -hmm. conventional, of course, years ago, but also yep. milled and now printed. Um, overall, not only strength, but overall, no. how, how do you compare? Yeah, it is. it's really simple because um, you want you, you print or mill make one block of PMMA. So you, you print one base, you print one arch, you put them together. So it's one block of PMMA material. So that cannot beat a, a, a denture with separate teeth. That's why I don't believe in the separate teeth uh, solution uh, because the strength is a lot better. There's also some research reports on that one that you can see what the strength is of a separate teeth and a full arch. And you can see that's almost double the strength when you use a full arch in a denture like a digital denture. But that's for me, in my opinion. Um, I will give it to Menno. Yes. Yeah. Only. On, yes, please. Only looking from a material uh, point of view. Uh, of course, we have been making uh, denture materials for over 80 years at Vertex, so we know uh, what a denture material should be like. And one of the goals was to make a material which is uh, as good as or even better than the material that we are currently currently running and so I'm happy to say that this is the case of course strength also depends on the thickness of the denture uh, and a lot of other things I'm sure that if you uh, uh, drop uh, a normal denture in the sink it will break and I think that the same will occur with the printed one but purely from a uh, material point of view uh, the materials are as good as or even better than the current uh, analog materials I would say Yes, very good. Thank you so much. Um, we have uh, exceeded our one hour time mark a little bit. Um, a, a question that came in from France is, do you know when the 3D denture, uh, denture 3D plus, sorry, resin will be officially authorized in France? Well, France is, is still a part of Europe and Europe uh, has the CE cert certificate, um, which is, is definitely coming. Um, we're working very hard on it together with the European instances, uh, with the notified bodies. Um, it is not so easy uh, with the new medical device directive uh, that is yeah, postponed now, but um, was actually coming in place. And, and yeah, Menno, I, I'm not sure if you want to add something to it, but uh, it's difficult to, to give a timeline, but it will come soon. Yeah, it's uh, very difficult uh, because uh, it's not up to us. It's up to our notified body. Uh, they will have to give the approval, the so-called stamp on, on all the paperwork that we've done. Uh, yeah, we hope that it will ha happen soon, uh, especially since we already have the FDA clearance, the clearance for Canada and also Australia. So that uh, leads us to say that it could not take long anymore. But uh, yeah, it, it's not up to us, so it's a waiting game. But once it's there, I'm sure you cannot miss it. We will broadly uh, announce it on, on social media everywhere else. Yes, indeed. So 
With this being said, uh, I would like to thank Herman very much for his uh, very informative presentation. Of course, Menno and Lars from the Next End team for sharing their knowledge and experience. Um, this video will be uh, shared on the YouTube channel of Next End by 3D Systems. So if you go to YouTube and search for Next End by 3D Systems, you will find our channel with this video and many more. Um, but it will also, of course, be shared uh, on Facebook and LinkedIn by uh, the Next End by 3D Systems um, page, uh, and everybody will, of course, share it. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you very much. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day, evening, or morning, and hope to see you all soon.